Hi guys, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my secret on how you can create this cinematic color grading look in your photos just using Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So to create this effect is actually really simple. And what I'm gonna do is break this video down into four steps. So step one is going to be overall global adjustments, changing the overall exposure and tone of our photo. Step two is going to be color grading. So how can we create a cinematic look with our colors? Step three is going to be local adjustment. So using masking to really emphasize certain parts of our photo and also add in a flaring effect if you can in your image. And then lastly, we're gonna got is photo effects. So what we can do to actually really emphasize by adding in grain as well as in adding in a vignette to our photo. Okay, so let's start off with step one, which is global adjustments. So in global adjustments, what we're gonna do is firstly go over to our develop panel, then drop down to our basics panel. And this is the photo I'm gonna be editing. It was actually a photo I took last year. Uh, it was just before Christmas uh, when I was testing the RF 50 mil F 1.2. If you'd like to watch that in depth review, as well as having a look at more sample images that I took, go ahead and watch this video here. But okay, what we're gonna do firstly is open up the basics panel and then we're gonna drop down to our white balance. Now, I did shoot this on auto white balance and I'm finding the photo a little bit too warm, especially for the time of day. So what I'm gonna do is go to my temperature here. I'm actually gonna drop that down to around about 3,500 Kelvin. And immediately that's made the photo look a lot more cinematic, adding a little more, more cooler tone, especially to the shadows. And I'm actually gonna leave the tint alone and we'll adjust that later on after we've done color grading, just in case it's ever so slightly off. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is go to my exposure. I'm gonna bring that up ever so slightly. So I might bring it up by around about 0.25 of a stop, just brightening it ever so slightly as I did find it was a little bit too dark. Okay, so we're gonna skip out contrast and let's go to highlights. Now, although this photo was shot at nighttime, there is a lot of highlights because there's a lot of light sources in the image. So we can actually target those specifically by going to our highlights and dropping that down. I might drop it down by around about minus 30% in this example. Adds a little bit more definition to the actual shape of those lights there, as well as just affecting it. And what we will do is we'll add in a more of a glow effect later on to really target specific areas, but we'll do that in step three. Now with the shadows here, again, we wanna raise those because a lot of shadows in this image, again, it was shot at nighttime. So we'll go for around about plus 40 in this example. And then with the blacks here, or with the white and blacks, I wanna add a little bit more contrast. So what I'm gonna do is go to the white here, increase that by plus 10, and then go to the blacks and also drop that down by minus 10. This is a great way to add in a little bit more dynamic range to our image. And again, you can actually reference in the very top corner, you can reference your histogram if you need to. Okay, so now let's drop down to texture, clarity, and dehaze. And this is a great way to add a little bit more sharpening effect to our image without actually sharpening the image entirely. So what we're gonna do is go to our texture first. I'm gonna add in a small amount of texture probably go for around about plus 10 there. And then with our clarity, I'm gonna increase that because again, this was shot with the rain. I really wanna define that rain in the image. And the best way to do that is go to clarity. I'm gonna increase that by around about plus 20 in this example. But I'm actually gonna leave dehaze alone. And for the reason, we really wanna add in some haze later on when we're adding in that cinematic look with our flaring elements we can do with the light sources in the image, but we'll do that in masking. So I'm actually gonna leave dehaze alone in this example. But if you're finding there's too much haze in your image, you can reduce that down if you want to. Okay, so now let's move to vibrance and saturation. Now there is a difference, if you didn't know, go ahead and watch this video here, but basically vibrance and saturation target different colors within our image or where the colors fall within shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now to do that, I'm actually gonna increase the vibrance by plus 10 and then increase the saturation by a little bit smaller by plus five. This will really target the bright red bus. Because again, I shot this in London. London's famous for these bright red buses and I really wanna emphasize that in this image. So ever so slightly increase the vibrance there will actually help this photo. Okay, so let's move out of the basics panel and now let's go to the tone curve. Now in the tone curve, I'm gonna leave the point curve alone. I'm just going to be affecting our red, green and blue channels. And it's the reason we didn't add in contrast earlier because we're gonna add in color contrast. And we're gonna be really specific of where we're adding in our contrast to our photo. And that's what's really nice about, instead of just using the contrast slider, we can actually use color contrast contrast in the curves adjustment layer to target specific parts of our image. So instead of just adding contrast everywhere, we can target different exposure parts of our image, which is really nice. Takes back more control of our image there. So what I'm gonna do is raise up the blacks ever so slightly. 
then really bring down those shadows there bring up those sh darker shadows so bring down those darker shadows bring up those lighter shadows almost mid-tones there then bring up those whites now this image will look crazy you'll think what am i doing but actually this works really nicely but you need to apply it to all three channels so ooh, i've made a mistake there i don't want to add an effect there there we go so we'll go for an effect like so so we'll go for something like so so basically adding in a black area or removing black then adding in a little bit of a darker shadow and bringing it up into a highlight highlights so what i'm gonna do is right click on that copy channel settings go to our green channel right click paste channel settings and then go to our blue channel right click paste channel settings and you can see we've added in a really nice strong contrasting effect now if you're finding it's too strong all you need to do is just bring back some of these effects but remember to copy any changes you've made from one channel to another they need to be consistent across all three channels so basically we've added in a lot of contrast to the shadows but not as much contrast to the midtones and a little bit more contrast to the highlights so we can be really specific on where we've done it and you can see it makes a really big impact to the photo so if i do the before and after we've added a lot more contrast and definition and really brought out that rain in the image, which I am really happy with. Okay, so that's all we're gonna be doing to global adjustments. Let's move over to step two, which is going to be color grading. So when it comes to color grading for a cinematic look, what we really wanna do is emphasize certain colors that are found in common cinema films. So if we look at a few examples here, we can see there's a lot of teal and a lot of orange in these images. And also, if we have a look at any flaring elements, they're also quite blue. So what we're gonna do is take those inspirations that we've seen some for some films and we're actually paste it onto our image and we can do that by using basically three tools we're going to be using the color mixer tool the calibration tool as well as the color grading tool okay so let's start off with the color grading tool first so what we could do is drop down to where you can see color grading and it's basically split into our shadows midtones and highlights here now let's go over to our shadows first now in our shadows we want to add in a more of a cooler blue look so what i'm going to do is whip that all the way around to our kind of blue area here so i'm going to go ahead and choose hue of 220 then what i'm going to do is go to our saturation and add that color in now don't go too far because it will make the photo look really peculiar but just enough to make it look subtle and you can definitely see it but oh, without it overpowering the image so around about 10 percent works really nicely in this example and then what i'm going to do is go to my highlights here and basically add in the complementary color so the color is an overpowering of the image we're adding a little more yellowy tone so if we're going for hue of 220 what's the opposite well let's go for hue of 50 in this example and again go to saturation here and simply increase that until you're happy with the overall result so in this example i'm pretty going for around about 15 percent so what we're doing is we're adding a cooler tone to the shadows and a warmer tone to those overall highlights there and it works really nice to create this cinematic look okay so once you've done that what we could do is go out of the color grading panel and now let's go to the color mixer tool and it's split into three sections hue saturation and luminance if you didn't know hue is the type of color saturation is the intensity of that color then luminance is the brightness of that color if you'd like to learn more go ahead and watch this video here which is my masterclass tutorial on it okay so let's go ahead and change the hue first now in the hue what i'm gonna do is go to my reds here increase that ever so slightly go for plus 10 adding in a little bit more of an orangey tone to those reds again adding that cinematic look and then again it's the same situation with the oranges let's make them a little bit more orange by dropping that down to around about minus 15. now with the yellows here i'm going to add in a little very orangey tone so i'm going to go for minus 70 in the yellows and then with the green here i'm going to go for a similar amount but this time a little bit more i'm going to go for minus 80 there now with the aquas here again you want to add a bit more of a tealy look so we can do that by increasing those to plus 60 and it's the opposite with the blues so we want to add the more tealy look so again removing blue from those blues and we can go for around about minus 30. and in this example we're actually going to leave purple and magenta alone now what we're going to do is move over to our saturation now with the saturation here i really want to increase the brightness of that bus or the intensity of that bus so what i'm going to do is increase firstly the saturation and then we'll increase the luminance later but we'll increase that to plus 60 there now with the oranges there we're also going to increase those as well by plus 20 20, and it's the same situation with yellow we're also going to increase those by plus 20. then with the green we're going to go for a little bit of a stronger effect so we'll go for around about plus 40 in this example and then what we'll do is we'll move down to aquas blues and purples and we're actually going to reduce the saturation so i'm going to go for minus 20 in the aquas minus 50 in the blues 
and then minus 25 in the magentas and it's the same situation with the purples. So we're adding in color in our warmer tones and removing some of the brightness in our cooler tones. Now, if you're finding it's a bit too strong, what you can do is actually just reduce those numbers ever so slightly. So I might go for the blues there, I might, instead of going for minus 50, I might go for minus 30, and with aquas, I might go for minus 15. I found it's a little bit overpowering in this example, although there is a lot of blues in the image already. Lastly, let's head over to luminance there. And we're gonna do two changes. Brightness of that bus, we're gonna increase that. No more than plus 30 there, that's a good example. And then with the greens here, again, drop those down, darken those there, go for minus 40. And it's the same situation with aquas, let's bring those down again. Let's go for minus 40. And then lastly, we've got the blues there. Let's drop that down by minus 20. So that's all we're gonna be doing in the color mixer tool. We can see we've actually made a really big impact. So if you do the before and the after, we've done it, added in a little bit more of a tealy orange look to our images, and I'm really, really liking it. But what we'll do is we'll emphasize it even further when it comes to uh, local adjustments, because we can be really targeted of what we're adding and where. Okay, so lastly, what we'll do is turn off the color mixer tool, and let's go drop down to calibration tool. Now this is a really helpful tool to creating a cinematic effect because all we need to do is just affect two sliders. The green primary slider of hue and then the blue primary slider and then we're gonna affect the hue. So with the hue here, what we're gonna do is increase that by plus 10, let's go to plus 10 there. And then with the hue here, we're also gonna drop that down by minus 20. And what that will do is it will make a little bit more of a tealy, orangey look in our image, which again, I think represents cinematic in quite a nice way. So what we do is the before and after, it's worked really nicely in this photo. And what we can do is quickly show the before and after overall. So here is the before, you can see, and here's the after already. It's looking really cinematic. Okay, let's go ahead and make it even more cinematic by moving over to step three, which is local adjustments. Now in local adjustments, all we're gonna be doing is basically creating a few masks to really emphasize certain parts of our image. Okay, so let's move over to our masking panel. We're actually gonna create, or the first mask, and it's a part two mask, is what we're gonna do is go down to our radial gradient here, and we wanna emphasize the front bus. We're gonna go ahead and create almost like a, an anamorphic flare effect. So to do that, go ahead and create a radial gradient, but make it very long and very thin. Go for something like so. And we're gonna create two of them. So we're gonna go for create one like so, and then obviously we need another one for the other headlight. So we go down to add, go all the way down to radial gradient, and again, select the other one and create a nice thin one like so. And then this time, what we're gonna do is go to our exposure. We're gonna brighten that up, go for maybe 0.75. And then we're gonna to go to our temperature here and drop that down, adding in that blue. So we go for about minus 20 there. Now, if you're finding it's a bit too thin, you can actually bring them up a little bit, but making sure they they kind of match each other there, as you can see, creating that anamorphic flare effect. Now, obviously, depending on where the lights are in the image, again, when and where you want to add them, but I really like that effect. But I'm finding the kind of reflecting off of the road there quite strong. So we can actually darken that down to really emphasize that bus. So to do that, create new mask, go to linear gradient, and this time I'm just gonna go ahead and affect the bottom image, bottom part of the image here, and all I'm gonna do is go to my exposure and just bring that down, really emphasizing that bus there. And you can see that anamorphic flare is working really, really nicely. Of course, if you wanted to, after you've exported it, you could add in an anamorphic flare in Photoshop if that's something you wanted to, but I actually quite liking it here because it's a little bit more subtle, but if you wanted to, that's something you can always do. And then lastly, what I'm gonna do is actually just darken the overall foreground here or just the sky section you can see. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is go to create a new mask, go to linear gradient, again, just darken that. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that down, but not by too much. Go for something like so, go for something. There we go. So you can see it's working really nicely. Now, if you still want the bus to pop even more, you can create one more mask. I'm gonna go ahead and create a radial gradient, select the overall bus there. Just basically your, this, this particular type of mask, I like calling kind of like the focal point mask. So where does your eyes first go to in the image? And you basically wanna brighten that small section. So what I'm gonna do is go to do that and just brighten it ever so slightly around about maybe 0.3 there. So I just call that basically my focal point mask. Where do you first look? And then basically just add a mask, brightening it overall. So what I'm gonna do is go back, and already that's made a decent impact. What I could do is show you the whole mask. If I do the before and after, we've added in this real specific look, which makes it look really cinematic. Now I'm finding the bus headlights maybe a little bit too blue. So what I might do is drop that down by minus 10 instead of minus 20. 
I think that works quite nicely, but it's adding in that nice subtle anamorphic flair, which I really like for this photo. Okay, so let's lastly move on to step four, which is photo effects. Now in photo effects, what we're gonna do is go into our effects here. We're gonna go to our post cropping vignette. I'm gonna go ahead and just add in a vignette there. Now this works really nicely when your center part of your image, so the focal point is in the center of your photo. And this works really nicely. So if it's a person or in this particular case, a bus, Adding in a vignette basically draws more attention by basically using luminosity. So I'm going for minus 20 there, and I'll go ahead and increase the feather to around about 80% in this example. I think that works really nicely. Now, because I shot this at nighttime, you can see I shot it at 1000 ISO, which means I've got a decent amount of grain if we go ahead and zoom in. Although I shot it on my R5, there's still a little bit of grain in those shadows there. So what we can do is go to my details panel here. What I'm gonna do is go to my luminance noise reduction, increase that to around about 25 and then my color noise reduction will also increase that but there isn't too much grain but if there's more grain in all your image you might want to adjust that accordingly as well as you make sure you balance that with sharpening or what you can do is actually the opposite effect which doesn't totally look cinematic but you can do if you want to go to your effects panel and then you can actually add in grain but me personally I don't like adding in grain to my cinematic photos like so. Now what I might actually do is actually just go into the crop here and just ever so slightly adjust the crop. So I might place the bus just on my horizon line there or my third line, basically filling in the center part of our image there. So straightening it slightly and cropping in a little bit further. And as you can see, I am really happy with this and it looks incredibly cinematic. So what I can do is show you the before, and then show you the after. And what I'll do is I'll apply it to a whole bunch of other photos as you can see. So here's a photo, here's the before, and here's the after with the cinematic look applied. And I must say, I really, really like this effect. It looks really cinematic and adds a nice, cool teal and orange look to your photos, which really does replicate certain film looks, which I absolutely love. Here is the before, and here is the after. And there we go, that is how you can create this awesome color grading look in your photos just using Lightroom. Thank you to all of my YouTube members that are currently supporting the channel. If you wanna become a YouTube member and get some awesome perks, including free Lightroom presets, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.